Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Now, our theme is make yourselves saviors of men. Amen. Amen. And I believe that as we do that, God blesses us mightily. Now, this morning, I want to share with you from Matthew 28, verse 19, the Great Commission. It says, Go ye therefore into all the world and teach all nations. Now, to teach people, you need to gather them together. And that is definitely not a crusade. Is that not so? Because you can't easily teach people at a crusade. You have to teach them in a church setting or in a classroom setting. So a spiritual classroom is a church. Okay? I'm okay, I'm okay. A spiritual classroom is a church. And so um, you must you must know that to have a spiritual classroom is important to achieve, to get a spiritual classroom where you can teach nations. Amen. Amen. So the Great Commission in Matthew teaches us about the importance of teaching. Do you see? As part of the Great Commission and the importance of church building. Now, one of the things that people don't realize is how important it is to have a church and to have a mega church. So, there is a need for everyone who is part of UD to have deep in your heart one of the implied visions of the Great Commission. Implied because it is not written in the Great Commission. Well, but that's what somebody called the Great Commission. It's not written in it that go and build churches. But it says go and teach nations. Do you see? In order to teach anything, you need to gather the people, which you cannot do with monkeys. You can't, you can't gather monkeys. They will never sit down and they will not come repeatedly to any place. And this is the reason why you can't teach a monkey anything. But human beings, you can gather them. You can make them sit down. You can make them come again. You can come, come again tomorrow, come again the day after, come again next year. That's the difference between human beings and monkeys. So the, the reason you can teach human beings but you can't teach monkeys is because human beings are gatherable repeatedly into rooms or classrooms or churches. And when they gather, you can teach them. So fulfilling this commission, the last commission or the great commission, involves organizing groups of human beings together and teaching them in all nations. Amen. Amen. Now, until we get ourselves involved in this work, you'll find out that your life will never experience the greatness that God wants your life to experience. And the great things that God wants your life to experience are beyond your imagination. No, no one here can pray for what God wants to do for you. You can't even pray for it. Because in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9, the Bible says that I has not seen and ear has not heard what God has prepared for those who love him. 
It has, it has not occurred to you. And cannot occur to you. Because many of the good things and the nice things and the great things that God wants to give to you, you don't even know that they exist. Yeah. Because you are a local boy. And local boys don't know a lot of things. Amen. Amen. What God could do for you, if it, it, it doesn't occur to you. So when you start praying, you will not pray for it. It doesn't come up in the topics. Do you understand? If I look at some of the things that God has done, even for me to have Hamatan Bible Seminar, it has not occurred to me before. It occurred to me last year when I was, I was somewhere praying. And then I, it, it's something that came to me. I should do this. I said, wow, for, since I was born, it has not occurred to me before. Yeah. This campus has not occurred to me before. The Kodesh had not occurred to me. I didn't pray for the Kodesh. We were bombed out of Kolegono. <laughs> yes. Everything, almost anything about my life that is good did not occur to me and I didn't pray for it. If I, if I prayed for it, if I say I prayed for it, then not true. Most. Because it, 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 we are local boys and we don't know things. We are just local champions. Are you with me? So eye has not seen, ear has not heard what God has prepared for you. And if you are a Christian for some time, a time will come where it will occur to you that God doesn't answer your prayers. <laughs> has it occurred to you before? How many have had it occur to you before that it seems that God has not answered your prayers? Now, I want to tell you that it's true. God doesn't answer your prayers. A lot of prayers, he doesn't answer them. Because of your topics. And a lot of things that we are asking for, these are not what God is interested in. Yeah. It's true. I mean, how many have ever made a phone call and you felt that the person doesn't want to answer? R raise your hand. Yeah. And, and later you find out that the person didn't answer, he didn't want to answer. I will not call back. It's the same thing with God. You've been, it's been occurring to you that he doesn't want to answer or is not answer. And I'm telling you, I'm confirming that it's true. He doesn't want to answer it at all, and he has not answered. He will not answer. The things that God has prepared for you are very, very great. Yes. They are greater than, they are such that if you, if you were to pray, you wouldn't pray for that. You wouldn't pray for that. Because it will not, it will not even come to your mind. It will not even come to your mind that. I want this, or I want this, I want that. It wouldn't come to your mind. Yes, that's the truth. So, rather, I want to encourage all of us here 
to have a mind to fulfill God's, Jesus' command. Inside that command, you'll find things that you don't pray for that are bigger, wilder, nicer, better than the ones that occur to you. Yes. There is a car far nicer than the one you are thinking of. But you see, you are local champion, so the car that is occurring to you is a local one. But there are higher things that have not occurred to you. Receive them in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So God has indeed great things in store and it is rather in our interest that we passionately attach ourselves to his plan. And I do believe with all my heart that as we do that, we are going to see things we don't pray for. Things that we've noticed that we call and there's no, there's no reply. Who is changing my sound? Hallelujah. Don't change my sound, please. Now, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Teaching. Teach all nations. So, now, what shall I do if I want to teach nations? I must build a church. When I wanted to have crusades, I felt to myself that I needed to start with an auditorium and gather people and preach to them in an auditorium. Then I felt that in Ghana, I was, I was analyzing Aura Roberts' ministry. That's how I'm telling you how I started having crusades. I was analyzing Aura Roberts' ministry, and I realized that he went around America having crusades, and many of the American evangelists, even Benny Hinn. And in America, they have built auditoriums, convention centers, halls, all over. So all you have to do is to go and rent one of them for three days or two days and you have your program. So I thought, when I go to KJB, I'm going to rent a beautiful convention center. <laughs> when I go to Hohoi, I'll rent a beautiful convention center. When I go here, I'll rent a beautiful convention center. When I realized that there was no convention center in Donko Chrome and most of the places that we wanted to go. So then I realized that I have to get my own auditorium and move the auditorium from place to place. Are you with me? So that I could gather people in that auditorium and preach to them. So that is where I brought the idea of the tent. Do you see? So then the main focus became finding a tent. And I didn't know anybody who had a tent in, in Ghana. So I went abroad and found a tent so that I could gather people to preach to them in. When it comes to church work, when it comes to church work, the mega church, you realize that to fulfill this great commission, we have to gather people. And to gather people means we have to build churches physically. And in reality, whether they are in classrooms or halls, we need to gather them so we can fulfill this great commission 
to go to every nation and teach them all things that Jesus has ta- taught us. That means that we have to make churches. You get what I'm saying? Yes. Now, you must have a vision to build a church in your life if you want to do well. Now, um, I have a book called The Mega Church. Yeah. A mega church and church growth. Now, to have in your mind and your heart the vision to build a mega church is the greatest vision for a businessman. Yes. For a student. Why? Because Jesus is Lord not only of our pastors. Jesus is Lord of businessmen. He's Lord of students. He's Lord of... He's the Lord of scientists. He's the Lord of teachers. And Jesus said, I will build my church. You know, the, the promises that we claim that Jesus was saying to us. Nobody says John 15 verse 16. That you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go forth and bring forth fruit, that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. I've not seen any businessman in the world who says that this does not apply to that whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name he may give it to you. I've not seen any businessman saying that it doesn't include him. These are for me, men of God. Those who are called by God. No, John 15 verse 7. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you... I see businessmen quoting it all the time. Students quote it all the time. Scientists, computer, uh, what do you call it? People, computer, people. Information technology, bankers. They have been quoting this verse. Or oh, what, what could be the reason for them to select this verse and then leave out leave out, I mean, select part and then deselect another part. You have not chosen me. I have chosen you. I have ordained you. You should go forth. Bring forth fruit. How can it be that the first part of the verse, this one, it's even within one verse, that whatsoever you should ask the Father in my name, he should give it to you. How can the top part apply to those who are called to to be pastors? And the second part is applies to businessmen and applies to uh, scientists, bankers, and so on. I mean, I don't really understand the logic. You see, hypocrisy has entered us. We have swallowed a camel and then when it came to a small ant, we said, no, it's too big. Yes. Or John 14, verse 11, verse 12. Believe me that I am in the Father. No, this is only pastors should believe in me. Pa- Men of God believe in me. Businessmen, this does not apply. Businessmen, don't forget. John 14 doesn't apply to you. These are for pastors. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for my work's sake. Verse 12. He that believeth on me. He that believeth on me. Businessman, do you believe in him? Lay people, do you believe in him? He that believeth on me. No, man of God that believe in me. Prophets. The works that I do, shall they do also. That's prophets, the new generation prophets. And great works, greater works than these shall they do because I'm going to my father. 
Hmm? Greater works. But for who? He that believeth. Now, now look at 13 and 14. That whatsoever you shall ask in my name. No, this is for men of God. This is for prophets. Only pastors should re- 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 believe such, such words. That whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. This is for men of God who are building churches. Those of you who are students and those of you who are working at SSB and working at SNIT. You are customs. Those of you customs officers. Read another. Don't forget. John, these are for men of God. Shame on you. And verse 14. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Only pastors and those who are doing church work. Never quote or say amen to this when when we are saying this. These are for pastors who are building churches and those who are doing the works of God. Never. I warn you never to say amen. Never say amen when you when you when you if you ask anything in my name. I'll never say. Amen. I don't want to see you in particular saying amen. Or Matthew eighteen nineteen. Matthew 18, 19. That one too. Don't, 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 don't. I don't want you to use it when you are praying. That if two of you, so if two prophets shall agree on earth, church workers shall agree on earth, as touching anything they shall ask, it shall be done for them. I only want to hear of you mentioning this verse. These are for those of us who are committed to the Great Commission. We are into outreach. I'm going for crusade next week so I can use this verse. You don't use this verse. You are are into business. God forbid that you should use such a scripture. (laughs) Is it not Matthew 18? Is it not Matthew 16 that he said, I will build my church and the gates of hell? I I wonder why you want to say you, you have applied 18, but 16 is, doesn't apply to you. 16 says, I'll build my church. 18 says, if you, two of you shall agree, I will answer. I, never, I, I, want to, I don't want to hear you ever. If, if you hear me preaching and I say, if any of you ask, never say amen. amen. Only pastors should say amen. amen. <laughs> you see that you are hot. You see that you are hot. You have nothing. Your life is finished. So, when I took my book here and I said, this is the greatest vision for businessmen, some of you said, "Mm." (laughs) when I say church growth, this is the greatest vision for uh, pastors, for Christians, church planting, I tell you, it will purify your life. Yes, to purify your life. It will purify, it will do so many things for you. So let us go 25 reasons why you must have a mega church. Which is this? Who has it? Anybody? Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 8. Twenty-nine verse eighteen. Right. 
Where there is no vision, the people perish. But happy is he that keepeth the law. This is chapter one of this book, the mega church. The best vision for businessmen, for pastors, for Christians, for believers, for anyone is I will build my church. What is Jesus? God's work. God's aim. Amen. Amen. Now, it says, where there is no vision, where there is no vision, the people perish. So where there is no vision to build the church, the people perish. Amazing. The people perish. People don't do well. When you perish, you're obviously not doing well. So if you want to do well, you need to have the vision of God. God's vision. Amen. Amen. And that's the vision of God. That is the vision of God. To build his church. Yeah. So if you want to do well in life, you need to have a good vision that God has. Amen. Amen. Now, in the Hebrew, the word perish means to uncover. Uncover. So when you have no vision, you are uncovered. Huh? You are uncovered. Your covering is gone. So many times I travel, I meet churches, pastors, I can see that they have no vision for church work, even though they are pastors. They are not consumed with a burning vision. This is chapter one of this book also. Chapter one of church growth. The first chapter is have a burning vision. Yeah. Have a burning vision. Yeah. Burning vision. So, where you are in the church and you don't have a vision to build the church, the Bible says the people perish. The people are uncovered. They are exposed. They are, and another word is naked. Another word is dismissed. The people are sacked. So when you don't have the vision, the right vision and a vision, you become some way. Spiritually, financially, every way. Socially, maritally. Many people who didn't follow the call of God, God, God ended up divorced, ended up falling into sin. Many things happen along the way. There are so many things. Everybody is susceptible to so many problems in this life. So many but the vision protects you from perishing. Remember the word perish, perishable, spoiled. When you say these are perishable goods, these, they get spoiled. Yam will get spoiled. Fish will be spoiled. Tomatoes will be spoiled. Meat will be spoiled. Perishable. Trust me, I'm telling you. I've been doing this work for some time and been pastoring people. You know, recently I read Rick Joyner. He was saying that most of the people who have told him that they are going to earn money and that when they get the money, they will support the work. Almost none of them have come back. I was surprised. I read it yesterday. I mean, I've, I've been saying this for years and this is real. 
You are going to get money. When we get money, he said that most of the people who became wealthy, they didn't remember God. So I would not recommend to you a vision to be rich. I don't think it's a good vision. Yeah, even for a businessman, that's what I'm telling you, for a businessman and a worker, it's not a good vision. A good vision is the vision of God. Yeah. Yeah. And today, God is touching on businessmen because it's, when we started, I was pointing out those of you who say you are doing, you are selling this, you are selling that, and I say, church is the main work for you and the main thing in your mind. Some of you were questioning it. That's why God was telling you, never quote certain scriptures again. They are only for men of God and for pastors. It doesn't apply to you again from today. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Perish. Perish. Churches perish. Yeah, churches perish when they don't have the vision. The vision to work for God. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. I'm giving you 25 reasons why mega church and church work must be your heart. It says, therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast and movable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Now, interesting, the word is not in vain. Your labor is not in vain. The word vain is empty. That your work or your labor is not empty. Which is how most jobs are empty. Yes. Empty. It is some emptiness and hollowness in the work that you are doing. And when you are diagnosed with a disease, and when you are informed you are going to die. Recently I was looking at somebody's, what do you call it, diagnosis and so on. They are giving the person some months. Yes. To live. You know, when you look at all those things, you realize that whatever work you are doing, even if you die, you see that all the things that will be said about you, your work will not even come in at all. But it will just be the church part, the part that was not empty. That is the part of you that will be mentioned. Yeah. Knowing that your labor in the Lord is not empty or vain. That is the labor that is not empty. The rest is empty. So this verse is talking about the vision you must have is a vision to work for the Lord, which is written at the top of the gate there, work for the Lord. And you see, therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast and movable. The two words, steadfast and unmovable, sound like they are the same. In fact, one of the meanings of steadfast is unmovable. And unmovable too means unmovable. But the word steadfast, yeah, so it's trying to tell you immovable, immovable twice. That this work there, immovable, immovable twice times two. Times two. Emphasis. <laughs> You must be very wild in your resistance to move, be moved away from the work of God. Yes. You must be very wild about it. Immovable, immovable. But I like another meaning of the word steadfast. It means to sit down. Yes, to sit down. It comes from the word sit down. So it's like well, the work of God, sit on it. and say, that's, where I, that's where I am. Yes, don't get up at all. <laughs> so sit down on the work of God. Sit on it and say, sorry, I'm sitting here. Because you see now that you are sitting where you are, it's not easy for you to move. Yeah. 
You'll be there. Yeah. Sit down. Because the other works are empty. So I'm not saying that you, you don't, you, you, you may need to do all the other jobs you are doing, but you should have in your mind that this thing I'm doing is empty. The real vision, the real work is to work for the Lord. So when a businessman or a teacher, a school teacher, and whatever doesn't have the work of God, it doesn't have the real part. It's like all the things you have are empty without one thing that has something in it. You don't have just one element of, of, of substance. Yes. And the work is pure and simple. It's the church. Yes. The church work is the work. Now, that verse, it says always abounding. That word always abounding is the word super abound. Yeah. It means to super abound. It's like to do excess, superfluous. Another word is superfluous. Things that are not necessary, you do all of them. Yes, you do extra. Instead of doing the minimal, the smallest amount, you do more, far more than is necessary for you. Far more. Super abound. In the work of the Lord. So my dear friend, I know that many people despise the work of God. But you are going to sit on it. <laughs> yes. Yes. Every church must have a shouter. Yes. A shouter who shouts. If your church doesn't have a shouter, you are missing something. Church needs a shouter. We are sitting here today. Because we know what we want. Amen. So, Proverbs 29, verse 18 again. Without the vision. Without the vision, the church doesn't do well. Businesses don't do well. You know, recently I met some of my business people and I gave them a vision to build churches. And I gave them, I said, this is how much I've, I've designed a church that you can finish completely. Roof, paint, doors, everything that they can have church in nice painted church of a figure and I gave them that vision that it will cost this amount since then since I gave them the vision they have been flooding me with like, because the church the amount is said that you can build the full amount you can build a complete church yeah since then they've been Flooding me with churches. Wow. I, when we, we give it you know, four weeks or whatever, we build, we send you a picture. That's your church. We built it. And, and, I, and in the church, I've never had businessmen sponsoring like that. But when I gave them the vision, life came into them and it's working. So without a vision, it's like people don't do well. So now that I saw that, Charlie, you can build a church. We, we put the plaque there. These are the pastors from 1972. This one, this one was funded by this person, built by this person, dedicated by this person. The list is there. Small plaque. Like that. So even yesterday, now somebody came and said, I've given one church. They said, I'll be back. I will be what? I'll be back. I see you doing wonders. 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 The 
The vision brings life and takes away the perishing. Yes. The emptiness. Even my, my personal, my personal church that I'm going to build, I've been I've also become more as they are doing it, I've also become stirred up that I, I want to move to my project. Not a house or a church. Yeah. So the vision, it gives life to the meat that is spoiling. Yes. A lot of meat you buy, you eat is pork. They fry it hard. It's like a very hard thing, but it's because it's pork. <laughs> <laughs> How many have bought some watches or something? Say that I'm, making, I, I'm telling you the reason why it's hard. It's not normally hard like that. <laughs> yeah, it was getting spoiled. You think they will make, they want to make losses? They have to fry the thing hard like. This is the big vision. Now, I, 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 I don't know what vision you can have for your life. But this is the number one vision. I will build my church. Matthew 16. I will build my church. Amen. Amen. Number two. The second reason why we must have a mega church is that the desire to build a mega church will lead you onto a journey. Amen. The desire for a mega church will lead you to a journey. That is good for you. Amen. Your desire or your vision for a mega church, whether you are a pastor, whether you are a businessman, whether you are a school teacher, it will lead you. Visions lead you. Your vision makes you. You don't make your vision. Your vision makes you do things. You don't even know that you're doing it. If I was in power, if I was in a political party and I was in power and I have a vision of being there for a long time, I would do things to please and impress large groups of people. Not necessarily what is... Right, if that was all that my aim was. To stay there so that I can be there and do whatever I want to do as long as... And that is what they do because that is their aim. So the things don't, may not agree with your mind, but I will do something that will please this group. Then I'll do something that will please these people. Then I'll do something that will please... It. And the larger the groups I can please, the longer you can be there. So the things don't make sense anymore at a point. So your vision leads you on a journey that people don't understand. Yes. People don't understand what are you, where are you going? What are you doing? Yeah. They don't understand. What, what are you doing? Yeah. So that's why we don't understand lawyers sometimes. But don't you know that what you are saying is not true? Say, you, you, you don't understand. This man's very rich. Every day I go to court, I get so much money. This man's very rich. So That's all I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get my money. Yeah. Why are you doing a cesarean section? This woman can deliver normally. The baby's head is small enough. It can come out. It's, oh, you don't understand, you know. <laughs> when, we, when, we, when we set up a drip, when we admit you four days, five days, every day you sleep there, we get this. You don't understand the person. So your, the vision of the person is guiding you. You don't know that you are being guided by your vision. You don't know how it is leading you. So my vision to have a church and to do the work of God led me to Korea. Led me to Tulsa, Oklahoma. I went for a conference. I was following Hagen. 
What happened to me when I was listening to a preaching and the anointing came on me made me change my life. Made me go to Tulsa when I had enough money to go to Tulsa, Oklahoma. I flew there. It will make you go to programs. So the anointing is here. We are going there. It will make you travel. It will make you read books. One of the most boring magazines I ever saw was a magazine called Church Growth Magazine. Every day when I open it, I'll see Yonggi Cho's writing, long writing with no paragraphs. And they were always writing that the way you can have a big church is to have a vision. And I said, ah, this is a very boring magazine. Every day, have a vision, have a vision, have a vision. I don't understand it. But you see, my interest in having a church made me eventually go towards this boring magazine. Which nowadays published my articles also. And pictures, yes. But I'm saying that your vision makes you do certain things. So what is your vision? And that's why if you are a businessman and your aim is for the church to work, you see that it will guide you along certain lines. Yeah. But if your, your aim is just to have more money, you, you soon see that you are compromising. You are telling lies. You are stealing. You are cheating. You are doing everything that is wrong. Do you get it? You are building something that is eight, nine million dollars. Your invoice is 15 million dollars. Clearly. Clearly. Huh? Clearly. You build a hospital that is supposed to be 40 million dollars. Your invoice is clearly 50 million dollars. Creaming of a cool 10 million dollars. And you say, oh, I, I'm, I mean, this, I'm, I'm, God is blessing me. God has blessed me with a contract. But you are a thief. You are a liar. Your vision has made you a thief. Your vision has made you a liar. Your vision has made you a liar. Yeah. And since your vision is to get more money, when you have an opportunity, you always go for such things. Because it's only money that you want. You, you, you present yourself as though, oh, I want, to, I want to do this for this. But instead of doing that, what you do is that you change the figures. So that something that's 25 million, you make it 26 million. And then later you say, I've donated 1 million. Huh? <laughs> And you don't even, it doesn't even occur to you anymore. It's 26 million. You change it to 26 million and say you've donated 1 million. But all you've done is to adjust the figures and cream off some amount. Because your vision is to get the money. The topic that you preach will change because of your vision. The journey, the people you are attracted to. You will not be attracted to thieves. Yes. Because your vision is to build the church. I will build my church. I'm telling you. Have it as a vision. We are, we are in the church. You know. I've been pastoring the church for more than 30 years. The same, the same church. So I must have known people. Over the years, you can't pastor a church, and it's one of the biggest churches in the country. You can't pastor a church and not know so many people have come up so doing business, doing this, doing that, travel abroad, all these things. I've known them, and the years have gone by. Years and years have gone by. We have now entered the bracket. You see, from 50 going is the is the age where diseases are diagnosed. That's the era where cancers come more frequently. That's the era where people die more frequently. And so, so we have reached that, that realm. These are the things that we are seeing now. Not weddings and beloved doses. We are seeing the end of the things. And people have come up with different things. I'm going to build this. I'm going 
abroad to get this. I'm traveling here to go and do this. It has amounted to nothing. I'm still here. I'm still waiting for all the things to materialize. Nothing has materialized and we have entered into this season also. Evening has come. We are in the twilight. Twilight zone. Yeah. All the visions have amounted to nothing. Except the one vision. I will build my church. Jesus said, I'll build my church. This, this, is, this, is what, this is what is remaining. I'm telling you. It's still going strong. And I've noticed of late. Pastors who don't really talk much about church work, church planting. I'm talking about big pastors. Not in Ghana. I'm not talking about anybody in Ghana. I've noticed them saying how they are going to build churches now. We are going to build churches. I want to build church. And God, people can see that we've wasted time and money on all kinds of empowerment visions. This vision, we are going into farming, we are going into industry, we are into mining, we are into whatever. Shelly! What is the meaning of Shelly? Empty. Knowing that your labor in the Lord is not empty. It's not shilling. Hey! Are you listening to me? Yeah. So I need you in your heart to be determined to do the work of ministry. I need you to be determined. Because this is going to lead you on a journey. The books you read, you'll be reading church growth books. Whilst you are reading the church growth book, you'll get a revelation even for your business. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Yeah. You even get a revelation for your business. I've had people tell me, I was reading Anakazu, and I saw how I can do whatever I'm in the bank. Yeah. That's why Lablam means learn about business by learning about ministry. Yeah. <laughs> because that's the only way I, could, I, I think I can help a businessman. Charlie, you learn about ministry. As you learn about ministry, you see the secret. Even what I'm doing now is a secret for business. Concentrate on the main thing that you are supposed to be doing. Yeah. Don't start so many things. Each thing you start is a new business on its own. Yeah. We used to have a printing press. A whole printing press. We print from beginning to end. We were producing our books. At a point I look, I said, no. This thing is a diversion. It's a distraction. I called all the printers, the workers, everybody. I said, it's a decision. Close down. We are closing down. When I look at the cost, because uh, the, the government has policies that make it cheaper to import books than to print. Yeah, it's cheaper. Far cheaper. Far cheaper. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Just like it's cheaper to import chicken than to grow it here in Mampong. Far, the local one is about 50 CDs. And the imported one, 15 CDs, you get a full chicken. Huh? Chicken that have been frozen for about five years. Some of you were in SS when it, when it was killed. You were in SS. When it was killed, it has been frozen for five years. You were in senior secondary school when it was killed and has been in frozen since SS till now. (laughs) 
I mean, another government was in power when the chicken died. Since that chicken died, and it's now come for you to eat. And that's some are more than five years. More. Some are, when they come, some of them are covered with green. And they scrape it off. Oh, yes. But the government have these policies. All the governments we've had have these policies. It doesn't matter which uh, party. The same. And you wonder why they don't say that. It will never make sense to you till you know the, vi- the, re- the vision that the people have. Yeah. Yeah. Something else is guiding them that you don't know about. Uh, that's why nothing can work. Farm cannot work. Rice farm cannot work. Chicken cannot work. Cow cannot work. This cannot work. Nothing. The people that import the things, when you, when you go into, you find out why. Yeah. <laughs> hey. So the behavior of a person looks strange according to his vision. That's why I said that your vision will lead you. You don't know what you are doing. No. But I said that you are going on a journey. And if you have a vision to build a church, to build a mega church, you will be led on the best journey for your whole life, I tell you. You will be led on the best journey for your whole life. Yes. To sit there and not be panting. That's why now I say every church should put more chairs than the people in the church. Fill the church with chairs. So that when you come to church and you see the empty chairs, you, the pastor, you see that you start to develop high fever. We don't spread out the chairs again. Pack the chairs and see where you stand. <laughs> Instead of a vision that asked for me, I'll marry this year. This year, I'll marry in the name of Jesus. You must rather have a vision. This year, I will build the church of God. Yeah. And you will see that you will marry faster than the beautiful girls. You may be, you may be Miss Ugly, but I tell you, you will be chosen before Miss Miss w- w- Wonderful. Miss Beauty. We chosen. It will lead you. It will lead you for a meeting. It will lead you to a prayer meeting. It will lead you to some good person. It will lead you to have a committee meeting with somebody. It will lead the person to look twice at you. You will be surprised at where it will lead you. Yeah. Yeah. Too good. Uh, a vision for a church, mega church, is the best vision and it is a good vision because it leads you. You don't even know what you are doing. Yes. If you sit with the politicians and you talk to them, you see that they don't realize how much they are controlled by their vision. They have the vision. It, it, it controls them. It controls it, Everybody's vision, my vision is controlling me. My vision is controlling. That's why I built a prayer garden. I pray, pray like I want people to pray, and I want us to pray. So, you see, why? What are you? Do you know how much is the land? Don't ask me. Yes, you know how much is the land? It's just there for prayers. In my vision, so to you, it doesn't make sense. But according to the vision that I have, it makes a lot of sense. It's driving me along a journey. Number three, you must have a mega church because the prophetic destiny of every church is that you will have a bigger, greater end than the beginning. Prophetically, the end will be great. So, 
you must have a vision that is in line with the prophecy. Yes. Job 8 verse 7. That's the prophecy. That thy latter end should greatly increase. Amen. So, you must have a, a mega church because that, that vision for a mega church. Why? Because prophetically, that's what's going to happen. There will be big church at the end. And it's happening. The church has never been bigger. It's bigger now. And it will get even bigger. So, the church that you have huh, is going to be very big. Yeah, it's going to be very prophetically. Yeah. And, and you see, a prophecy is like a river that is going this way. It's better to, sw- it's better to tell somebody, I'm going this way. That's the way that the river is going. Rather than say, I'm going this way when the river is going. This- Have you ever swam in a river? Who has ever swam in a river? I mean a big river. Which river did you swim in? Huh? What's the name? This way. This way. Yes. You swam or you walked? We swim. We don't know the river. It becomes so big, you know, during the, the rainy season. You know, and when we're younger, you know, it's easier for you to swim with it this way, downstairs. Because when you go up, you are going against the, 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 the current. You were swimming or walking? Swimming. <laughs> yes. I've also swam in a river. When the river is going this way, and you're going this way, pray about it. Yeah. You, you may never, if, if you come into the river from here, if you come into the river from here, and you, you say you are going here, you will be swimming, you realize that you are going this way. And then when you want to come out of the river, you are far from where you, where you came in. Yeah. Because you are going against what God has made that is going this way. God made every river to go a particular way. And you want to go the other way. Okay, it's on to you. You are welcome to hard work. God has prophesied. Your latter end shall greatly increase. That's the word of the Lord for us. The latter end shall be greatly increased. So you must now move towards mega, 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 mega churches everywhere. Sit down. Where are the pastors from the north? Tamale upwards. Where are you guys? This is from Panda, isn't it? Bimbila, Yendi, Salaga, Wale Wale, Boku, Boku. I can't hear you. Nadoli, Jirapa, Boku, Wa, Tamale, Gushegu. Where's Gushegu? Uh huh. Tatale, beautiful. You know, when you see the pictures of the churches, what I realize now is that all the churches are growing. Amen. Yes. All of them are growing. Yeah. All of them. At first it was like Tale. Sammy, you can't hear the town. What town? What town? Bole. Chiriponi. Tamale. 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 Bamboy. They are all becoming big. Wow. Yeah, if you see the pictures, wow. you'll be amazed. And they are having a lot, lot of buildings now. Churches are becoming bigger. Because that's a prophecy. <laughs> it will be bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. Bulga. It's, it's tamarind. Yape. Yape. Beautiful. Oh, are you all from Boga? Okay. Tamale. Okay. Sit down. And this way. Wale Wale. Buipe. <laughs> Beautiful. 
oil, they will find oil there. Amen. All this time, you, you'll be surprised. Yeah. All, all of them, they are all pastors from the north. It's working. So the graduates from this school. Graduates from this school. Yeah. Thank you. You can sit down. That, that, you see, when we started some years ago, you see, I mean, even how to stay there. Because if there is nothing in a crowd, what about Chiriponi and what about... Yes. <laughs> Yape. What is in Yape? We are just about to build a, a building. Dawa Dawa number two. Yeah. Yes. More. <laughs> the latter end shall be greatly increased. So it's better to find out which way is the river going. It's going this way. Then you flow. It's going this way. Then you just flow towards it. All the things will work then. Things don't work because it's not time for it to work. Many things don't work because it's not time to work. Yes. Bishop Oedipo was asked, why does he think his church is working? He said, because it's time. It's time for it to work. Time has come for it to work. Because he had been there before, it didn't work. Certain churches, it didn't work. He said, it's because it's time. It's time to work. May it be time for you to work in Jesus' name. Yeah. It's, time. it's time. It's time for the thing to work. Yeah. It's time. That's the time for the thing to become big. And that's what it will become. It will become very big. Yes. Yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing. And that vision, as for me, I want to flow with the prophecy. What God is doing, I want to do. As I, as I will build my church, may I feel very comfortable in that vision. Never have a vision to be rich. Never. Reaching to be rich, to do anything else. Just have a vision for God. All other <laughs> people who have this vision for years, they will never, they will never, it will never materialize. But you have a vision to do the work of a businessman. Everybody who prays pray John 15, 7, have that vision. And watch and see. Watch and see. Yeah. Everything that you have not had a vision for, God will give it to you. And like I told you, as a local boy, you wouldn't have prayed for certain things. Yeah. You know, one day I entered a place I had not entered before, and I said, hey, I'm a local boy. I never knew this place existed. You are going to discover places that local boys have not discovered. You are going to discover them. 